Hi everyone, today's video is all about accessories, the accessories that are available for the Sizzix Big Shot. If you are a complete beginner to die cutting and you've perhaps just got a Big Shot, um, I would recommend watching my previous video that I did, oh, probably over a year ago now actually. Um, if you look through my list of videos, there's one called Beginner's Guide to the Big Shot. And in that video, I take you through the basics of using the machine. And we run through literally all the basics. So how to how to die cut a wafer thin die, how to die cut a big scart die, how to use an embossing folder, etc. So if you are a beginner and you're watching this video because you know you want to learn the basics, start with that video first because this is kind of the next step. So this video is for those of you that have got a big shot, you're happy with using it to die cut, emboss, etc. But now you're thinking what other accessories might I want to get um, because there are quite a few accessories available and it depends what you're doing with them as to whether you need them or not. Some I would say are kind of essential if you're doing a lot of die cutting. Others are more nice to have depending on, on what kind of crafting you do. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the emboss and transfer set. This is a question I see a lot on the different um, die cutting forums. People asking how you use your cutting dies to emboss with the Big Shot. Now, this particular set are available. Um, I think you can actually buy them individually or as a set. I would recommend just getting them as a set. So you get your um, platform. Well, not platform your plate and then you get a rubber mat the rubber mat is really the key to this because this is what gives you the ability uh, for your die to not cut basically because the cutting side of your die you're going to place your cardstock on this rubber mat then your die and because you've got the rubber mat rather than a hard um, cutting pad that's what will make it leave an impression rather than cut. So that's the kind of key part to this. Um, now the sandwich you need with the Big Shot is, you would just use your base platform, then you would replace, uh, then you would use, um, get this right, you'd use one cutting pad underneath, then you'll place your rubber mat on top of that because you're, you want your die into the rubber mat rather than into a cutting plate. Then your cardstock, pop your die on top, and then you'll use this white plate. Now, there's a very slight difference in thickness to this. This is slightly thicker than a cutting pad, and you might need to play around. If you're using Sizzix dies, you're likely this will be the right thickness. But if you are using other dies, sometimes you, you might find, basically, this is thicker than a cutting pad. So if you find with using this one that your die actually cuts a little bit rather than just embosses, switch to a normal cutting pad. I would say try with a normal cutting pad first. Now I can feel that that's not got a lot of pressure, but it probably will still emboss. Um, I shall do half, let's go halfway as that is, with just the cutting pad. And then I'll turn it around and we'll go the other way with this white pad which gives a bit more pressure and you can kind of see the difference because it will vary depending you know it depends on your machine actually all machines are slightly different so i'll just go halfway with that and then we'll see the difference so with the um normal cutting plate it's embossed beautifully um, with using the white pad it has embossed but it's slightly more deeper so it really depends on how intricate the die. If you're just doing an outline die, you probably will need the white pad. So trial and error. Don't feel you've got to use them exactly as directed because I'm sure on the packaging it'll tell you to use those two together with a cutting pad. That's that. Um, but if you find you are getting it cut through, switch the white plate for, for a normal cutting pad and just use the rubber mat. So um, trial and error really but it is great it's nice particularly with some of these dies like this where they're they're designed to kind of cut into a card front it's quite nice to have an embossed area as well it gives you more use for your dies this would look fabulous then if you want to add some gilding wax or something like that on top so that is how you emboss your dies um, so that's the emboss and transfer 
set. I will put links in the description box for all these products because I know it's hard to remember all the names for everything. So I'll put links to everything there. So that's our first one. Next up, actually, let's mention what's on the side of the machine while we're at it. Um, I should mention the embossing mat and um, the embossing transfer set. You could use this in, in any of the machines. The Big Shot Plus and the Big Shot Fold Away do have more pressure than the standard size Big Shot. So I would say if you're using those machines, first try with a clear plate rather than the white because you probably don't need that extra thickness with those machines because they do have more pressure. Um, on the side of my machine, I've got the Big Shot Caddy. This is really useful. It does only come for the standard size Big Shot. It will not, it's, it's not big enough to go on the side of the Plus. Um, and the fold away obviously is a different shape, so it won't fit on that. So it is purely for the standard size Big Shot. But it clips onto the side and you've got various compartments for popping your pokey tool and bits and bobs. This piece here expands and it's great for putting your cutting plates and things. When you've got it on your desk, you can pop your, your platform and your plates there, keep them out of the way um, and then grab them as you go. So that's really useful and it does adjust. So um, if you only want to put, say, your cutting plates in there and not your platforms, you can make it smaller. So very useful to have. For me... The only reason I have this on the side of my machine, really, because I've got a big um, carousel pot there with all my pokey tools and things in. So I don't tend to store tools in here. But the thing that this is absolutely fabulous for, for me, is the tape dispenser. Because I've got my Sizzix Maker's Tape here and it's ready to go. So if I need to stick down a die before I die cut, say I want to place that and I want to make sure it's straight and I want to use my Maker's Tape, I can just tear off a strip with one hand, line it up, and off I go. Um, the maker's tape, actually, I'll add to the list when I put all the details in the description box, because that actually is a, a really useful accessory as well. Um, if you're not familiar with the Sizzix maker's tape, it's similar to washi tape, but it's not quite as tacky. So um, if you're used to using washi tape to hold down your dies when you run them through, if you, if you need them to be straight, you'll know that quite often with washi tape, it will tear your card and you have to kind of take a bit of the stickiness off by rubbing it on your jumper first before you put it down. This is less tacky, so you don't need to do that. You can put this straight on your cardstock, run it through and it won't tear your cardstock. So that's another useful accessory, which I'll add to the list. So that's the caddy. Where are we gonna go next? Okay, so the next accessory we're gonna talk about is the Chrome Precision Base Plate. Now, this is an accessory that I think um, everyone should have, really. If you've got any intricate dies, and by intricate, I mean um, dies like this, this Tim Holtz, uh, this is the Doodle Art. Any of these dies that are quite large and with a lot of detail on, um, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of metal here. There's a lot of tiny little holes and you're expecting your cardstock to, to push through all of those holes um, just with the pressure of rollers from the machine. Now, dies are getting more and more intricate. Um, when I first started die cutting, you'd never have something that intricate. Um, so the, the technology is sort of catching up with it, really. Sizzix have had a precision base plate out for, for some years, actually. It was a black one. Um, and that did really help with the intricate dies. But this is even more improved on that. If you've got the black one, you'll know that over the years it gets quite scratched. Um, and obviously the more scratched it gets, it loses its effectiveness ever so slightly. Still amazing and still much better than just using your cutting pads. Um, but the chrome plate is, is next level really. So this is the chrome plate. Um, I'll give you a quick but it's going to really glare. So um, it's basically lovely shiny chrome, very solid. And the difference is, if you think about it, if you're cutting, you know, that's my cutting pad that's been used a bit. It's a little bit bowed. It's covered in scratches. And when I'm putting something through like this, it, it's not touching in all areas. So it's really got to have a lot of pressure for that to, 
to get the card through all those little holes. Whereas when I'm using the chrome plate, it's totally flat. There are no scratches on it. There are no sort of weak spots. So it just really helps. Now, Sizzix don't recommend that you use the precision base plate with the Big Shot Plus or the Big Shot Folds Away. Both of those machines have a little bit more pressure than the standard size Big Shot. Um, so they don't recommend it because if you've got too much pressure, you could damage your dies. You'll end up with them going like a banana a little bit. And while I mention that, actually, don't use any of your sort of open, like your nested dies with this. This is only designed for intricate dies because it does give more pressure than the standard plates. So if you're using a die that's, you know, something like a nested die or an outline, the minute you put that through, it's going to turn into a banana because the extra pressure as it goes through the rollers, it's just going to bend. So this is only for use with intricate dies and Sizzix don't recommend you use it with the Big Shot Plus or the Big Shot Folds Away. Um, I do know lots of people do still use it with the Big Shot Plus. Um, I'm just going to tell you that Sizzix don't recommend it and leave the rest up to you. <laughs> um, so the way you would use this is basically the same sandwich as you would use for thin metal dies but you're just replacing your bottom cutting pad with the chrome plate so you've got your base platform then you've got your precision uh, your precision then you've got your thin adapter um, plate then the chrome then we need cardstock piece of card and then you die even with the precision base plate I'd recommend putting this through at a slight angle and then one pad on top now generally you will only need to run this through once with this base plate for this particular die if I were running it through yeah it's cut all through if I were running this through without the precision base plate, I would be, it'd be sandwiched between the two plates. I'd run it through, I'd run it back, then I'd flip it, run it through, run it back, because I know with all that detail, that's what would be required. But with the chrome plate, you can see I've just run that through once and it's die cut beautifully. I won't poke out all the pieces, but it's cut all the way through. It's got all the little details. Um, and I would just need to flick it really for most of those pieces to come out because it's cut it so well. So if you've got if you've got any of the Tim Holtz, any of the Sizzix um, intricate dies, particularly these sort of background dies, then I think it's well worth the investment to get the chrome plate. Um, but as I say, just for the standard size big shot, this one. So that's the chrome precision base plate. Let me just get these bits out of the way. Um, talking while we're talking about plates let's look at the magnetic plate this is something that's been around for years and I would consider this is a nice to have it's not for everyone really depends um, whether you're someone that tapes your dies down a lot really I I don't actually I only really take my dies down if I'm lining up say um, like this bookmark if I've got a die that goes around the outside then I might put a bit of tape just to make sure that's central and it's not going to move slightly but on the whole when I'm running my dies through I don't take them down so it, it's all about personal preference and it's great you know we've got the accessories if that's something that you would normally do um, then having the magnetic plate is going to save you a bit of effort so the way you would use the magnetic plate is it just replaces your base platform you don't need the adapter with this one so you would use your base platform and then your two cutting pads so we'll just quickly die cut something and i'll show you um and there is a magnet just cut a strip of card there are magnets all over this so if i pop my die near it you'll see it's not going to move um, it's very strong if you're just putting straight on, but of course you've got a cutting pad first. So you put your cutting pad and your cardstock 
and then you can put your die on and it's going to hold in place very useful um if you are someone that like that normally would tape your dies down um and if you're it's also useful if you're someone that likes to die cut a load of dies all at once um you can get the magnetic platform in different sizes so it can be used with the other machines um and then you'll just put your, your cutting pad on top run it through as normal um so yes if you're someone that likes to take their dies down then yeah look at the magnetic platform i'm not quite sure what sizes it comes in actually um i'll put all the details in the description box i know you can get an extended one um for if you've got the longer dies um, but i'm pretty sure you can get it for the big shop plus but i'll put the details in the description box here on youtube of, of all the different versions that are available so you can look that up so that's the magnetic platform um that's the packaging for my chrome plate um actually while we're talking about sticking dies down and that kind of thing we'll look at the sticky grids because it's kind of the same thing um we're in the same area really about taping down your dies now sticky grids do come in different sizes you can even get these that fit the sidekick the tiny and the idea is <coughs> is that they are grids. <laughs> it's designed to fit your cutting pad and cover it. And one side just sticks directly to your cutting plate. And then the other side, you can stick your die to. So these do have a shelf life because eventually they will lose their stickiness. <clears throat> but I've already stuck one onto a clear cutting pad here. And then all I would do is take off the release paper and once you've done your die cutting, put the release paper back on because it will keep it tacky for longer. These are particularly useful, say, if you want to die cut an alphabet um, where you wanted to have, you needed to know that all the letters were going to be in a straight line. So let's grab a couple of letters. So, of course, I can use the grid on here to make sure that my letters straight and I've got an equal diff you, know, you can use the grid lines to make sure you've got this, the exact gap in between so very useful for that um, obviously you would then put your card on top another cutting pad run it through as normal very useful for alphabets I would say um, I think probably most people use the the smaller grid actually the ones that go through the sidekick because um the sidekick obviously is great for those tight you know the, the really small alphabet dies that physics make so that's the sticky grids that again is one that um is a nice to have i would say and it's definitely if you've got a lot of the alphabets and particularly if you've got some of those um the tim holtz ones that are really really small then you're really going to find that useful um and as I say, it comes in different sizes. Um, obviously, you could put the, the grid um, that's for the standard size plate. You could put it on a bigger plate if you wanted to use it um, on those. There's, there's no reason why you couldn't. But um, it, as I say, do, they do come in different sizes. So that's sticky grids. What else have we got to look at? Well, back onto cutting pads, actually. We've only got a couple more things to look at. The next thing is the crease pad. The crease pad is for using with big dies. If you've got any big dies that have got crease lines in, as well as cut lines. So um, if you think about your boxes and things, um, let me just grab one. Now the crease pads come in all sizes. Um, I, the one that I use probably the most is the one for my plus because um, with the Eileen Hull journal dies, it's really useful with those. And um, for most of those, I use my plus machine. So these come in the different sizes. You can get the extended as well for the standard. Then you can get the plus. Um, you can also get for the pro as well. So I grabbed a big sty and this is a gift tab tag box. And the main box um, cuts the outline, but then it's also got all the score lines on it. And the danger 
because Big's dies are designed for cutting chipboard, mount board, quite heavy duty things, sometimes you do find if you're using thinner cardstock with them, the lines that are meant to just be fold lines might cut through. So if you've got any dies, um, and I know this is a common thing with the journals, if you're using fabric or leather, you will sometimes find it'll cut through because obviously it's designed for cutting through thick uh, mat board. If that's your case, then get yourself a crease pad because it will, it, it's got a bit more give in it, it's softer, and it just means that where you've got crease lines, they will crease, not cut. And you just replace the cutting pad that you're cutting into with that crease pad. Um, and obviously with a big style, you, you will need to be sandwiching it between your two cutting pads. So you just pop your crease pad on the top, run it through, and then all of your fold lines are there and none of them have cut through. So very, very useful thing to have. Again, it's, um, you know, I think a lot of these accessories are things that you pick up over time. Um, once, you've, once you've invested in your big shot, then you can gradually add all the extras. And I've had this crease pad for, gosh, I don't know how many years, um, because they're things that you're, you're not gonna need to replace really. Um, I mean, I guess if you were using it every day for years, it might, might get so battered and worn you'd need to replace it. But I, I've had this quite a few years and it's still like new really. So definitely worth picking up if you've got any, any if, you, if you're into boxes and um, any of those construction type dies where you've got score lines, then crease pads, definitely worth the investment. And the last thing I'm gonna touch on are the different cutting pads that you can get because um, your machine will have come with clear but you can also get glitter um, and over the years Sizzix do come out with different colours actually these are mint and then I've got silver glitter but I know we've had gold glitter we've had a lovely coral colour and you might think well yeah great they look nice that's it but there is kind of a, a purpose to them as well the glitter pads this one's actually quite used um, and the glitter kind of covers up the scratches a bit so it doesn't look as scruffy you would say as as he really as the one I've been using let me show you that one that one's got quite a lot of scratches in it um, and they're not so noticeable the other thing with the glitter or the coloured is when you put your, your cutting pads down on your desk as you get a messy desk sometimes you can't see your clear plates because they're clear so having the, the bit of glitter or the colour will just make them easier to spot on your work surface. The coloured ones are still clear, so you can still see where your dye is on them um, once you've made your sandwich. So um, they're not opaque, so you're not going to lose that flexibility of seeing where your dye is. But those are, are just sort of um, nice to have, so I'd say. Not essential. Um, and there's only a smaller benefit to having those over the clear ones. So it's just, it, you know, if you want, want to try them. So that's all the accessories I could think of. If I do think of any extras that I've missed, I'll put the details in the description box on YouTube. Um, and maybe at some point I'll even do a new video when more things come out. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please leave me a, a comment and I'll get back to you because I know there's quite a lot to take in here, particularly if you are a beginner, but I hope that this video has helped you understand what all these different things do and whether you need them or not. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.